Good morning, privateers. Welcome to the Asian preview and the North American wrap. Let's get right to the charts because there was some uh, interesting price action today. Here's the S&P chart, daily chart. You see it closed right near the lows of the day. For me, if we start closing under, so last week's low was 28.02. Close under this area this week, I think that there's going to be a big, big retracement. Um, you know, 100 you know, like kind of a three to five percent retracement. So we're watching this closely ahead of the FOMC meeting tomorrow. NASDAQ fared a little bit better, but we do have some old lows here as well from last week on their 68.90 area. Um, looks pretty negative. Uh, let's pop over to the cryptos because there was some news out that the CFTC is sending a subpoena to uh, Bitfinex, which is one of the one of the major exchanges. You can see what they've done. Well, here, let me just reset, but let's take a look at Bitcoin. Close right near the lows of the day, uh, just above 10,000. This old low here at uh, 9,030 is important. Uh, Ethereum holding on much better. Nothing really down here until Guess we got some lows here at 908. Ripple under some pressure, um, but we did have this old three-quarter Fibo down here at 87 cents. Still well above that. A lot of this can change. I mean, this thing's just a moving, moving target. Um, it's interesting that the trade today. Let's take a look at the dollar yen chart. So, as we saw earlier. The S&Ps came under pretty heavy selling pressure most of the day. A lot of this is the portfolio rebalance uh, tomorrow where the pension funds are will be selling stocks and buying bonds. <clears throat> so you don't know exactly if this is real flow that's going to continue into February or if this is kind of a you know two or three day move. If you look at what, look at dollar yen. So they sold stocks, they sold bonds today, fairly aggressively, and all dollar yen did was trade sideways. We have these highs at 10, right here on the 200-hour moving average at 108.94, and this hourly high, and then 108.70. Um, the more important level, we got down to 108.40. Last week's low is 108.28. Until we break this 108.28, I think there could be a swift move down to the 107 handle. But trying to play the correlation between S&Ps and dollar yen is not working. And uh, I have a lot of evidence to back me up looking at the P&L today at the, end of my, at the end of my day. So... You know, then you think, okay, well, let's let's sell the high yielders. Let's sell the, the carry trades, the Aussie N. S&P's heavy all day. Aussie N chopped around and straight back up. So Aussie N's not working. How about CAD Yen? Nope. Euro Yen? No, doesn't care. Bottom line is that correlation between buying Yen when equities are weak so selling the carry trades, buying the low yielding currency and selling the high yielding currency like an Aussie yen or a Kiwi yen just isn't working. Here's the sterling yen, same deal. Equities sold off and sterling yen rallied. You know, we, we discussed this today with, with the group and I feel like that the, the correlation, it, it may come back, but I think it's, the market's having a difficult time figuring out where the safe haven currency is when you have uh, a bond sell-off and an equity sell-off at the same time. Let's remember over the past, you know, three decades, stocks would go up, bonds would go down, you know, higher yields. Stocks would sell off, people would look for the a flight to safety, which would be in the U.S. bond market. The 
risk parity trade. I don't have a chart of it, um, but I, I will try to get one on on this uh, on this call at some point. The risk parity trade is basically a perfect straight uptrend line where <clears throat> bonds were going up, stocks were going up at the same time. What happens is when those turn and you start seeing equity selling and bond selling at the same time, that risk parity, the rebalance of the risk parity portfolio, being 60% in equities and 40% in bonds, that comes unglued very quickly. And there's a very, very small window to get out. So some of the things that we think would be maybe a better way to play, <coughs> excuse me, risk off would be a dollar EM. Um, but even this, if you look at it today, just on the hourlies, dollar Mex did okay, maybe some NAFTA worries, but dollar Turkey, dollar Rand generally would have done much better on a, uh, an equity solve like we've seen today. So we have to wait, we have to be patient. We have to look eventually the algos that are out there that are programmed to trade, say, a euro yen versus S&P. They're still trying to recalibrate their algos right now. We're generally pretty early um, as point and click type traders who follow price action very closely. Today it didn't work. I'm not saying that it's not going to work in the future, but clearly there's a disconnect right now from risk off and trying to figure out um, what currency pair to trade, if it's an Aussie yen, a sterling yen, a dollar yen, euro yen, uh, could be euro Swiss. Maybe the Swiss franc is the safe haven these days, even though that has lost its safe haven status over the years. So. We're watching the price action closely. We're waiting. We have some event risk coming up. Uh, clearly, uh, tonight's Australian CPI is extremely important because if you remember last week, Kiwi CPI disappointed in a big way. Kiwi got slammed. Kiwi is barely recovered from that sell-off from last week. Let me take a look at the chart here. Uh, it did make a new low for this move, but uh, bounced pretty aggressively today. But if you look at the, uh, the daily chart, um, this was that sell-off from last week on the on the week CPI, and then we came down to this uh, seventy-two eighty level today. You know, for me, it's more. I think we still will retrace and get down to the half fib of this recent move. This is just of two thousand eighteen, which I think the market's following pretty closely. Um, so. The market's expecting, uh, I guess, seasonally, the uh, January CPI number for Australia is generally generally weak. So we're expecting that to be a weaker number. Uh, with Australian dollar up here, you know, not too far from the highs. 81.35 was the high of this whole move. It's had a massive up move up in the past month, or the, yeah, the, the entire year. That could come on under some pressure, and, you know, 80.40 for us is... Uh, it's kind of the area that if that breaks, and I think we can retrace down into the uh, 79 handle, even the 78 handle for that matter. Um, we have the FOMC tomorrow. You'll hear more about that on the European Open. Good luck trading and uh, Aussie CPI coming up. Cheers.